What if I told you that a massive male-led migration 5,000 years ago is the reason much of Europe looks the way it does today? This wasn't a conquest of armies, but a biological takeover. Around 3,000 BCE, a wave of people swept out from the eastern plains, but they weren't migrating as families. Genetic data reveals a shocking secret. Some studies suggest that for every one woman who made the journey, there may have been as many as ten men. This wasn't just an invasion that conquered lands. It was an event that permanently rewrote the DNA of an entire continent. The paternal genetic blueprint of the men who lived in Europe before this moment was almost completely overridden, replaced by a new lineage of fathers. It's a story so dramatic, it sounds like fiction, but it's written in the code of our own cells. How did a single group with such a lopsided population manage to so utterly transform the genetic landscape of Europe? What did this mean for the people already living there? And what does this ancient transformative event have to do with the ancestors of most Europeans living today? Let's unravel the story of the most successful invasion you've probably never heard of. To really get a grip on how huge this change was, we need to rewind the clock to a time before these newcomers arrived. Picture a world we call Neolithic Europe or Old Europe. For thousands of years, this continent had been home to established and sophisticated farming societies. These weren't scattered bands of hunter-gatherers, but settled peoples whose own ancestors had made a great migration thousands of years earlier. Around 9,000 years ago, the first farmers spread out from Anatolia in modern-day Turkey, bringing agriculture to the continent. They were the first to grow crops and raise livestock on European soil. Over millennia, they built villages, created beautiful pottery, and erected the massive stone monuments that still dot the landscape, from the temples of Malta to the passage tombs of Ireland. Genetically, these early European farmers had a distinct signature, one they inherited from their Anatolian ancestors. They had successfully populated the continent, mixing only a little with the even older hunter-gatherer populations who had been in Europe since the last Ice Age. For a long time, this was the face of Europe, a patchwork of farming cultures, all genetically descended from those first Anatolian pioneers. Their societies were stable, growing, and spread from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic. They had their own cultures, their own beliefs, and their own unique DNA. They had no idea that a storm was gathering on the horizon. A storm that would not just change their way of life, but their very paternal ancestry. Far to the east, beyond the forests of old Europe, lay a vast, unforgiving sea of grass. This was the Pontic Caspian Steppe, a huge corridor of plains stretching from modern-day Ukraine and southern Russia into Central Asia. And this was the homeland of a new and powerful culture, the Yamnaya. The Yamnaya weren't settled farmers. They were nomads, pastoralists whose entire world revolved around huge herds of cattle, sheep, and goats. Their name comes from the Russian word yama, meaning pit, because they buried their dead in simple pit graves under large earthen mounds called kurgans. But they had two pieces of technology that gave them a kind of superpower, the horse and the wheel. The Yamnaya were among the first to truly master horseback riding and use ox-drawn wagons for large-scale movement. This gave them a level of mobility the world had never seen before. Entire communities could now roll across vast distances, seeking fresh pastures. Their world was one of constant motion, open skies, and a horizon that was always moving. Genetically, the Yamnaya were also a new blend. Their DNA was a fusion of two ancient hunter-gatherer groups, eastern hunter-gatherers from the Russian plains and a people from the Caucasus Mountains. Scientists call this mix Western Steppe Herder Ancestry, 
and it was a genetic ingredient almost totally absent from Neolithic Europe at the time. They were tall, hardy, and perfectly adapted to a life of expansion, and pretty soon they would turn their gaze to the West. Starting around 3000 BC, something dramatic appears in the archaeological record of Europe, a new culture known as the Corded Ware. Named for its unique pottery decorated with cord impressions, it shows up suddenly and spreads like wildfire. For decades, archaeologists debated where it came from. Was it a local trend or a sign of invaders? DNA evidence has now provided the stunning answer. Skeletons from corded ware burials carried huge amounts of Yamnaya-like steppe ancestry, in some cases up to 75%. This wasn't just an idea spreading. It was a colossal movement of people. The corded ware culture was the footprint of the Yamnaya expansion into the heart of Europe. But the most shocking detail came when scientists looked closer at how this mixing happened. By comparing the DNA and the X chromosome to the rest of our DNA, they can estimate the ratio of men to women in an ancient migration. For the steppe expansion, the results were staggering. The data pointed to a massive sex bias. While the exact numbers are still debated among scientists, some studies estimated 10 migrating males for every one female. Let that sink in. This wasn't a slow migration of families. This was, in all likelihood, a rapid, aggressive expansion driven almost entirely by men. It paints a picture of young, mobile bands of warriors or herders pushing into new territories. What this meant for the Neolithic people they met is written in our male genetic lineages. The Y chromosome passed directly from father to son tells a brutal story. The old Y chromosome types of the Neolithic farmers, which had dominated Europe for 4,000 years, were largely replaced. They were swept away by new lineages from the steppe, specifically R1A and R1B. In one of the most dramatic examples, a study on ancient DNA in Iberia, modern Spain and Portugal, found that after the steppe ancestry arrival, Nearly 100% of the local Y chromosomes were replaced over a few hundred years. It was a near total takeover of the paternal gene pool. The genes show us the result, but not the human drama behind it. Was it a violent conquest or a gradual social takeover? This is one of the most shocking stories buried in our DNA. And it's just one of many you've never been told. If it blew your mind, subscribe for more and let me know in the comments. Do you think this was a peaceful integration or a brutal takeover? So what happened after this wave of men swept across the continent? A new Europe was born. The genetic evidence shows a clear pattern. Incoming steppe males mixed with the women of the local Neolithic farmer populations. The result was a new hybrid population one with steppe fathers and Neolithic mothers. This fusion created the genetic profile that would come to define most of the continent. Today, this Yamnaya-related steppe ancestry is a major component of nearly all modern Europeans. Its impact is strongest in northern and central Europe, where it can make up as much as 50% of a person's total genetic makeup. Populations in places like Norway, Lithuania, and Ireland show some of the highest amounts. While the percentage is lower in southern Europe, it's still a significant part of the ancestry there, too. That ancient event 5,000 years ago is a huge part of why the majority of Europeans have the genetic profile they do. But the Yamnaya and their descendants didn't just bring new genes. They almost certainly brought new languages. The Yamnaya migration is the leading theory known as the steppe hypothesis to explain the spread of the Indo-European language family. This is a massive family that includes everything from English, Spanish, and German to Russian, Persian, and Hindi. The idea is that the Proto-Indo-European, the ancestral tongue of all these languages, was spoken by the Yamnaya. As their male line descendants spread across Europe, they took their language with them. 
Over time, as these groups settled and became isolated, that single language fractured into hundreds of new dialects, which eventually became the languages we speak today. The legacy of this Bronze Age expansion lives on within us in ways we're only now starting to understand. It's not just in our ancestry charts or the languages we speak. It's in our physical traits and even our health. Genetic variants for things like height and lighter skin pigmentation, which were present in various ancient European groups, were spread far and wide by the steppe migrations. But this inheritance may have come with a complicated trade-off. In recent years, scientists have been exploring a fascinating hypothesis linking Yamnaya ancestry to the risk for certain diseases, most notably multiple sclerosis or MS. MS is an autoimmune disease most prevalent in people of Northern European descent, the very populations with the highest levels of steppe ancestry. The theory is that certain immune-related genes passed down from the Yamnaya were once a huge advantage. For a pastoralist people living in close quarters with their herds and the germs they carried, a hypervigilant immune system would have been a lifesaver. In the ancient world, these genes would have meant survival against deadly pathogens. Today, however, in our modern, more sanitized environments, this same supercharged immune response may have nowhere to go and can turn on the body itself, potentially contributing to autoimmune conditions like MS. It's a powerful reminder that our ancestors' genetic legacy is a double-edged sword and that events from 5,000 years ago could have real consequences for our health today. The ghost of the step herder still resides in our DNA. So when we look back, the story of the Yamnaya isn't really one of empires built in stone. It's a story of people and their genes. We began with old Europe, a continent of established farmers, thousands of years in the making. Then came the riders from the steppe, a mobile and powerful people who brought new technologies, a new way of life, and a new genetic signature. Through a massive male-biased migration, they triggered one of the most significant population turnovers in prehistory. They largely replaced the paternal lineages of old Europe, mixed with the maternal lines, and in doing so, helped lay the genetic and linguistic foundations for the continent we know today. The face of modern Europe was forged in this Bronze Age genetic revolution, a legacy of steppe fathers and Neolithic mothers that lives on in the DNA of hundreds of millions of people. Their story is our story, carved not in stone, but in blood.